Hey, I want to preface this video by talking about something very quickly. Sir Pugger tweeted a few days ago hinting at a video he's working on where he's going to show how clans use bots to scout UIMs in PVM hotspots so that way they can PK them when they bag their loot at the Willy Ditch. And I want to quickly explain how to stay safe on a UIM because really the only way you would get PK'd at the Willy Ditch is by being lazy. Which is understandable because if you're going there a hundred plus times a day when you're doing PVM, it's very easy to get complacent. I'm showing this on my normal account because it's a lot more convenient to show it this way. Uh, but the first things you should always be aware of is private chat off and don't be in a clan chat. Also, all bots aside, you should still assume that people know the world that you're on and assume that they're waiting for you if anyone saw you in that world. And because of that, you should also always switch worlds before you're about to hop into the wildy. The safest way in the wilderness to bag on a UIM is to come over here, like the east side of Edgeville, and go up to a skeleton and start boxing it. Uh, if the skeletons are kind of far away, you could just range it and that way it'll get close to you, but you just want to come here and then start boxing it, and no one can attack you when you're in combat. And then from here, just go in, put your items in your looting bag, and then go back out, and no one could have attacked you in that time. But you gotta make sure you're actually boxing the skeleton. And the reason why no one can attack you in this spot is because it's single weight combat. Now that spot's really good if you have a bunch of items to bag, but one if you're just quickly putting in one or two items and don't want to run all the way to the side. Because of course that time adds up when you come back here every five minutes for hours on end. It's actually pretty safe to bag in any single way spot if you're in the wilderness for less than five game ticks. And that's because that's the delay between being frozen and teleblocked. Uh, maybe it's possible to do it in four ticks, but either way, point being, if you're just bagging an item or two, you only need to be in the wildy for one game tick. And I'll show you a live example right here. I always pray melee and augury, or I guess mystic might if you don't have augury, because this way, just in case, it gives you the magic defense if you get teleblocked or frozen, and then if someone decides to AGS or claw you out or something, this is your protection from that. Uh, generally, when you're doing PVM, you would tend to have brews or sharks on you just in case anyways. Some people prefer praying magic with augury, I guess it's personal preference, but I'll show you a live example right here of how this would go, being in the wilderness for one tick, and notice how I switched the spellbook right here. That's in case I get frozen, I can teleport out, and you also saw I clicked back the same tick that I went in there, because if I get teleblocked that way, I'm walking straight out, and I couldn't have gotten frozen in that time. I hope that gave you some insight before going into that video whenever it comes out. Uh, so any UIMs, stay safe out there, because it is the wilderness, and you are fair game. I understand how easy it is to just not think about any of this, but the only way UIMs die at the ditch is by being complacent or ddos Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Iron Man. And a few videos ago, we started doing raids. However, we ran out of brews. So last video, we spent about 20 hours killing the giant mole because that is the most micro-efficient way to get bird's nest to make brews. And you can see we end up with over 1100 KC. And right now, we just left off after having a long herblore sesh, gaining over 400,000 herblore XP, which is like insanely huge for a UIM. Uh, you can see we have 6.9k doses of brew, which is about 1.7k 4-dose brews, which would last for over 500 raids if I actually want to do that many. But something I totally spaced out on was the fact that while opening the nests from Mole, we got a crazy amount of seeds as well, and it would really be a shame to waste these by just dropping them, so we're going to be using them. Actually, I think there's a Runelite plugin for like identifying what these are if I type in identify, item identification. Uh, yeah, and then from here, you could decide if you want to be like a medium length or a short length. So I'll just set that to medium. I know it's maybe a little bit cluttery, but easier to like read them that way, I think. This way you can see what seeds we have. And I think it works for the herbs too. Oh yeah, I just have to check this. Cool, there we go. I can see what these are too. Anyways, I spent like 80 hours at raids that first week. So I think it's nice to take a little break from it, not only for myself, but just to change up the content as well. So we're gonna continue on with this little break from raids and go on a little skilling grind to use up all these seeds that we have. Uh, I've mentioned a lot of times before that I do eventually wanna get 88 agility for the Hydra shortcut, because I do plan to do Hydra once we get 95 Slayer. So at least for now, we're going to go to the Relic of course to train Agility because I need Marks of Grays for Amelie so I can make all those Super Energies, which let me just show you what I have. The stack of Super Energies has been going up more and more over time. I just really haven't done any Rooftop Agility 
I've just been doing Prifnos this whole time, but we have a uh, 3.7K doses of super energy. So that's the equivalent of like 370 marks of grace that we'd have to get, right, to use all these up. So I would like to clear out that spot eventually from the looting bag. Luckily, I have all the teleports available for all these patches. I don't have to like run anywhere. I have every teleport unlocked, whether it's my POH or from a diary piece or whatever. Uh, it looks like these herbs are ready right now, so. Let's go do this farm run. And of course I'm going to start with these like lower numbers of seeds just so we can free up more inventory space as we go. But I was looking at these numbers here. It's eight seeds I use per run and how many runs do I do per day? Like 10 is still like quite a lot of runs. So like each of these stacks would last us a full day of just doing farm runs in between agility. So this could take us like three days to use up all these seeds. So we better start knocking into these as soon as we can. Dude, check out this beautiful XP drop. Oh. You may not know this, but you can actually note saplings on the Tulip Recon. I will be tracking all the farming XP we gain this video as well, so remind me at the end of the video to show you all that. Because, you know, it's definitely going to work, you reminding me. <laughs> I know the inventory looks kind of cluttered still, but give me a few more farm runs and all this will be looking real nice. And I guess we'll be keeping track of the agility XP as well, but... Here we are at the Relic of Course, and we are starting off almost halfway through 85 Agility. SMH, not imbuing, alking, and fletching all at the same time. How any fish int. Pretend like that was your first time hearing that, okay? That probably doesn't make it any better either. I've been making sure to plant the important seeds, such as the Snapdragon, Ranar, Torso, etc. in these patches that are protected, and then these other three, I just plant them wherever because I don't really care. Although, at this point, we're almost done with these important seeds. There's only one Snapdragon seed left, but I just thought that might be important to note. Thank you. I should start doing random events while we're here because I'll be able to hold on to these for the next few days. So maybe we can complete a set or something. But we just got the Mime event and we got the Mime mask from that. And there's been something I've been wanting to do once we eventually got this. If we come on over to the costume room in the treasure chest here, we have the black beret and we could actually combine these two together and then store those as its own separate item. Uh, I think we have to go to Mostly Harmless for that. Let me check the wiki. Okay, so with Patchy the Pirate right here, there's a right-click option for so. I have never seen this interface ever before, um, but you can see all these different options here. This is actually a really nice looking interface. I feel like this is really, really old school, uh, but we can make the beret and my mask. It costs 500 GP, and this is what we get out of it. A combination of the beret and the my mask. So he could also undo it for you as well, but I'd rather have this item stored. And then in the future, if I ever get a second Black Beret, I could just store that by itself. And I don't have the Mime costume, so if I do want to be able to store the Mime costume, I would have to get all the pieces for that. But I think it's really cool that we're able to store this as well in here. And you don't need like any other special pieces, or just the fact you can store that by itself, and it's not really a clue scroll item. I think it's cool. Dude, I love just filling stuff out in this room though. I'll probably make some full episodes someday of just filling stuff out in here. I got some ideas brewing for this room. All right, now that the inventory is starting to get empty, uh, we should have enough space now to start making super compost because in the bottomless bucket, if we check that, we have about 200 uses left, which is actually quite a bit, but it's not that often that I get to have this much available inventory space, and we don't have too much super compost in here to make into ultra compost as well, so I'm gonna start collecting pineapples and start making super compost. Uh, something a lot of Iron Men do is they use compost potions so they don't have to collect pineapples, but unfortunately as an ultimate Iron Man, I don't have the privilege of just being able to go into my bank, grab out Herolander, and start making compost potions. It'd be a little bit trickier than that. Either way, look how clean this inventory is now. See, I told you it'd be looking real good. But yeah, I haven't used the dragon fruit saplings because I want to plant these last and then just leave them there, because I do want to make a dragon fruit pie eventually to boost uh, from 91 to 95 fletching for the diary cape eventually. Although that's still pretty far away. I just don't know if we'll get dragon fruit seeds by then, so just to be on the safe side. Huh, I've never used this patch before. I guess there's really not much reason to plant flowers or allotments, but there is a compost bin here in Prifnos, and this is my first time ever using it. 86 agility coming in, boys. 
And we've got the first farming level that we've seen in a very long time. We've got 94. That would be a nice skill cape to have one day because you get extra yield when harvesting herbs. Doing these herb runs though are low key decent farming XP. It's like 15 to 20k farming XP per run. We also probably should do the Artie Elite Diary at some point because I'm pretty sure we have all the requirements for it. It's just a matter of actually doing it. So we'll get that done before this video ends. 87 agility. One more level until we unlock that Hydra shortcut, which we probably won't get this video. I don't think I really talked about that shortcut yet. I actually never even used that shortcut because I've never had Hydra unlocked. Well, I had Hydra unlocked on Twisted League, but I didn't have the agility level for the shortcut. But from what I understand, you don't save too much time. I can just show you on the map here. It doesn't save you too much time. Uh, in terms of running to Hydra because to get to the boss you just have to run by these regular Hydras which isn't really that far out of the way but when you run by them you can't predict their first attack so generally I think you might take like one or two hits or something from those little baby Hydras so you don't have to take the extra damage that way and either way if we may theoretically be at Hydra for thousands of kills maybe no reason to not have the shortcut as soon as possible but I'm sure we'll get that shortcut unlocked way before we get to Hydra probably just doing laps in between raids we'll get 88 agility okay here we go this is going to put us at 200 marks of grace and the last farm run is now ready to go so we're going to plant these last three lancedimes and plant this last round of saplings here all right the tree runs are done as you can see by the chat box here we have under 20 uses left of the bombless bucket so what we need to do now is make future me appreciate past me or i guess current me and luckily this whole time i've been doing these farm runs over the last three days i have been doing compost runs and here's the amount of super compost that we have 990. We essentially have a capped out amount of super compost, so I need to mine volcanic ash right now and then manually turn all these into ultra compost. You can also use volcanic ash on the compost bin and that probably would have been smart to do if I just kept a stack of volcanic ash on me, but you live and learn from the past, right? The amount of volcanic ash that you get scales based on your mining level and I think if you're able to get the most amount, it's like 6k per hour. So with our mining level, it's probably going to be like 5k ash per hour. So I guess it'll be like maybe half an hour to get the 2k ash that we need. And there is all the ash that we need. All the ultra compost is made now so we can withdraw this as a banknote, take out the bottomless bucket. And it's always so satisfying to put the ultra compost in the bottomless bucket and then you get double the amount. So once you put that in there, we have almost 2000 uses of ultra compost within the bombless bucket. Uh, let's go trade in these marks of grace for amylase now. I know I could like save for a second graceful set or even get a recolor for my current graceful set, but I would much prefer to have the herbal XP and the staminas and be able to clear out that spot from the looting bag sooner than later. Um, but the dark graceful is supposed to come out with dark mire, I believe, which in real time, that's still like two or three weeks away. So maybe we'll end up going for the black graceful at some point, but for now, we're going to buy all of this amylase, and we're now able to make 2,000 doses of stamina. I guess before we do anything else, I'll show you the XP that we've gained. So uh, first thing I'll show is the agility XP. This is from the last three days that I've been doing all these farm runs. That's about how long it took to use up all those seeds, maybe like two and a half days. Just over 600k agility XP. And then for the farming XP that we've gained so far this video, uh, it's almost 800k farming XP. And now what have we farmed this video? So over 600 lanthanime, which we'll just make into anti-fires. We could do magic pots, but magic pots first off won't be useful. And then second off, if we get 92 herb lore, I could eventually make those anti-fires into super anti-fires as we're killing Vorkath. So that'd be even more herb lore XP. And then as for all these other things that we got, uh, ignore the toad flax because that was from before, but everything else, all these, minus the Cerberus as well, all these herbs, we farm these in this video. I guess the main thing I want to mention out of these though is that with the dwarf weed, we need wines of Zamrak to make those into ranging potions, and I'm not going to manually collect the wines of Zamrak at the temple unless I really need ranging potion, but what my plan is, is once we go back to Slayer, I want to kill a lot of Caliphate Queen and collect wines of Zamrak that way. We'll talk about that more as the time gets closer with Caliphate Queen, but that's a boss I'm really, really excited for, and I've not had the chance to kill yet since I've got in the Warhammer on this account. But I'm going to go and get the super energies out of his spore here and we'll use up all the amylase and we'll put that in the looting bag. And then once we finish with those potions, I'm going to work on making all these anti-fires. And that could actually take a decent amount of time, probably a few hours to use up all these, but uh, at least we'll be set for anti-fires for a long time. And I actually need to decant these into four dose potions so that way I can use up the maximum amount of amylase per potion. So now, you're set to start training. Oh my god, when I drop these on the ground to decant, that's a lot of orange text. Wow, look at this guy. Young Boot. 
What a great novelty account. And there we go, 2,000 doses of stamina. We essentially made 500 four dose staminas. On to the Lance Dimes now. I think I might claim back a few things from Hispori and put them in my looting bag, just because if I do somehow like DC or Diet Dragons or forget to put the Anti Dragon Shield back on, um, I won't lose anything I care about. I was thinking about too with the Anti Fires, we don't have to make Super Anti Fires. We could make Extended Anti Fires too if I wanted AFK Infernal Eels, but I don't think those kinds of potions are really worth having a stack of. The inventory may not be completely ideal, but this is what we're working with. Let's start Herblore in. And we got an herb level coming in. There's 88. I uh, would like to get 90 eventually for raids, so I don't have to depend on getting the drop for the higher tier overload from Udile or Tecton. Since as an Iron Man, you can't have other people make you potions in raids. Okay, now we are done with the anti-fire potions. That took like just over two hours to do. Uh, let me show you the XP we gained. So in total from these couple of potions we made, we gained just over 150k Herblore XP in the last three hours. But I mentioned before, we're going to get the already Elite Diary done. So that's the last thing that we're going to do before we wrap up. So we have four tasks to do, although each of them could take like a decent amount of time. Uh, we'll start with the Fishing Trawler one because that's going to suck. We have to go through a full game of Fishing Trawler, which is, was it like 10 or 12 minutes or something? And hopefully we get Manta Ray, and luckily, because we have the Cooking Cape, we are guaranteed to not burn it, because even with 99 cooking, you can still burn Manta Rays. In fact, according to the wiki, you burn about 23% of Manta Rays, even with 99 cooking. Um, I'm sure we'll get more than one, we'll probably get quite a few, but I'll grab the Cooking Cape out of here just to be on the safe side, and apparently I am blind. Pretty, uh, toxic place. And we've gotten 18 Manta Rays, and of course, we got an Angler's Hat. <laughs> Um, and when you leave here, they just drop on the ground, everything you don't pick up, but we can't bank them, of course, so. We have to cook these on a range here, so we'll cook one, it'll be guaranteed to cook properly, and that's the task. And here's the Fashionscape hat. Uh, it's so sad we have to drop that. I think it took me like 45 rounds or something to originally get the full angler set. But I'll just like finish cooking these just to get some extra cooking XP in. Next task will involve more waiting, once again casting Ice Barrage on someone in Castle Wars. And luckily we don't need to grab the imbued heart because we have the level to just cast it without boosting. I actually kind of really like this fashion scape with the cooking cape and like the red style outfit going on. I think it looks really cool. Wait, you can't take non-combat items into the arena. So after I put this in the looting bag, will I have to re-suicide to do this task? Let's find out. Okay, before we switch back to Ancients, I want to test this so that way I can actually teleport home if it doesn't work. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I guess maybe it's the rune pouch, but um, I'm going to guess it's the looting bag that we can't take into Castle Wars. Let's actually do this task last then, just so we'll be set up to go to raids right afterwards. Okay, pick lock at the door. I think this is kind of a weird task. You have to like keep on doing it. And apparently even with 99 thieving, you still fail a bit, but there we go, another task. The arty course requires 90 agility, so we're gonna go make a summer pie from scratch and then use that to boost plus five and get that task done. My favorite way to make the dough for the pie really fast on the fly is just to come here into the Lumberage basement. I buy, was it a jug and then a pie dish and flour, and then I just fill up the jug from the sink, combine these two together for the pastry dough, and we put that in the pie dish. For the summer pie, you need a cooking apple, which I bought in the Lumberage basement, uh, the strawberry, which I just stole from the stall here, and the third and last thing we need for the summer pie is a watermelon. And I think the only way to get a watermelon is farming it yourself. So I was checking my patches here in Runelight, and I saw I luckily have one watermelon patch planted from a long time ago. And this is actually a task for the Mauritania Hard Diary. If you see right here, Mauritania Hard, harvest some watermelon. So I never completely dug up the patch, so luckily we are set. Uh, if I ever want to get watermelon seeds on the fly, I do like one easy route of temple trekking, and it only takes like a minute and you get watermelon seeds that way, but I'm glad we have this planted. I really don't even need to use preserve because we're boosted two levels beyond and two minutes is plenty of time for a lap up here but may as well have it on, I guess. Oh man, I missed this course so much. There we go. Now we can go to Hispori and try to fight it and probably die to that very, very difficult boss. And then we can get the last task done at Castle Wars. I was just thinking about this. Summer pie, I bet tastes really good. Apple, strawberry, and watermelon. That sounds amazing. Oh, I still have these leftovers from Mole. I could destroy that and we could Alk the Dragon Bow Axe as well because we're done with that. We got like 120k back from that, right? Yeah. Here we are at Castle Wars. It's really packed content in the Castle Wars world that 
we're in right now. And we unlocked the music track too, so I guess one less thing to have to do when we go for the music cape. Dude, imagine doing Castle Wars for fun and not just boosting it to get your collection log done as efficiently as possible. Having fun is illegal. If you go to the minigames thing here and go to Castle Wars, it gives you the suggested world, so should be, uh, shouldn't take too long, hopefully. There's a free space. Would I like to join? I would... <laughs> no. Oh, nice. Another music track as well for actually playing a game of Castle Wars. Let's uh, cast our Ice Barrage on this guy. Oh, no. This guy. We have to actually hit, I guess. There we go. And I guess we could just uh, die and then leave Castle Wars. We'll just give them a little sit. Yeah, that'll show them what's what. <laughs> Let me just leave right here. Oh yeah, and just to clarify, anywhere that's a safe death for hardcores like JAD or Castle Wars or Pest Control as examples uh, are also safe for UIM if you have items in the death storage. Yo, Two Pines, you stumbled pretty far away from where you're supposed to be. Feeling all right, buddy? So we got the already elite done, and this diary actually has some of the better perks from finishing it. Uh, so first thing we get is the Arty Cloak 4, which in itself is really good. This is the best in slot cape in the game for stab attack bonus. We just put it on here and you can take a look at these stats right here. So plus 6, also some magic attack and defense as well, and the prayer bonus is really nice. All around a very, very nice item for you UIM to have. So I'll put all the rewards on screen so we can take a look at what we get. It probably would have made more sense to get this at the start of the episode because you get unlimited teleports to the RD farm patch, but it's better to get that done later rather than never so i'm glad we got out of the way now so in the future whenever we do a bunch of farm runs we won't have to worry about running out of the five teleports and using the fishing guild teleport to get there and then i guess the only other notable thing is 25 percent more marks of grace from the rd rooftop course generally most people that are ready for the rd rooftop course also have the requirements for the rd elite diary so there's no reason to not get this diary done before anyone ever does rd rooftop unless you're like a skiller or like a special build or something there's really no reason why i didn't do the RD diary before. Um, same thing with a lot of these diaries. I have the requirements to do a lot of them. I just don't like specifically have a reason to do them. I haven't recently checked all the requirements for the diary cape, but I know for sure that the main ones that we're missing still are prayer, 85, and then fletching, we need 95, which we can just boost for. Oh yeah, and then we get a 50k XP lamp, which is going into herb lore. We've gained a lot of herb XP today, already almost a third of the way through this next level. I'm excited to get back to raids though. It's been a fun little distraction with this skilling grind and killing mole, but distractions are okay because the destination is not what matters. It's all about the journey. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a great day, and I will see you again next time. Hey, 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 hey. Listen up, sport. I think you've had enough to drink. I'm gonna need you to hand over the alcohol for uh, research purposes.